self-worth is a struggle that we all face. It is a deep thread that runs through us in our race to the end as a believer. And if you were raised with abundant love in a Christian home, you're still going to have struggles because we live in a world that is sinful. And if you were raised outside of the knowledge of God, the struggles are going to be really deep because the world has been blinded to the truth of the word of God. But in all things that we do, we look to Jesus. He is always our example. Did Jesus struggle with self-worth? Absolutely. Even his own people believed he failed his mission. Think about that. When I think of self-worth, I think of the staff of Moses. Moses was a Hebrew. He knew of the Lord. Plus, he was raised as an Egyptian. So he also knew about all the other false gods and the occult. But when Moses was appointed by the Lord to set his people free, the first thing the Lord had to deal with was Moses' self-worth. Even if you are raised in a palace, all that I have mentioned is external knowledge, wealth, upbringing cannot make a person feel whole on the inside. And people will try to fill that void with all kinds of things to no avail. And this void is located smack in the middle of our free will, and it can be a war zone. This void within us was created by God for him alone to fill. And he does this through his word, meeting our faith in the finished works of Christ. What a person believes about themselves outside of the word is also filling this sacred place. And this will cause blessings to flow or be blocked. Moses was married. He was settled down. He had children. He already had run from that life in Egypt. He was despised in Egypt because they knew that he was a Hebrew. And that meant that he had to sit separately from the Egyptians, for it was an abomination for them to allow a Hebrew to sit with them, eat with them, while he remained a part of the royal family. Imagine that upbringing. Moses had the self-worth of a Hebrew whose identity was in bondage with an external identity of a very powerful man. This means he was a mess. And within, we are told that he was meek and without, he was a trained warrior. So the Lord told Moses, remove your shoes for you are on holy ground. Now Moses was actually used to seeing manifestations of Egypt's dark arts and magic. But this time, God personally revealed himself to Moses. So to deal with Moses' self-worth, God uses his crutch. He was a shepherd, walking, climbing, so he used a walking stick. A shepherd would lean on his staff and contemplate the day. He would use it to protect the sheep. It was his personal belonging. It was like a work uniform with his personal identity, like our license and our financial IDs. We know the staff of Abraham was also marked with his identity and travels. And this staff, with its history and anointing, was passed on to the next generation. Can you begin to imagine the questions that Moses would have for God? The whys and the whens, the sorrow, the bitterness. But from the depths within him, Moses never imagined the calling that God had for his life to represent God and set his people free. But God did. Moses remembered Egypt. He remembered when he did try to help the Hebrew people. An Egyptian died at Moses' hand. The Egyptians didn't want him. The Hebrews did not respect him. So Moses checked out. We hear Moses asking God to send another. Moses stuttered. One could almost say maybe Moses had finally found some happiness, but our self-worth is a spiritual giant. And now God wanted him to return to Egypt to face not only his giants, what he truly believed about himself and his faith, also the giants that were holding God's people in bondage. This is all of us. So God chose a stick and Moses knew even that stick would be an abomination to the Egyptians because sheep were worshipped 
in Egypt. So a shepherd was an offense to an Egyptian. And today we want to focus on our self-worth and our identity in Christ. So the title of today's message is The Self-Worth of a Believer. We are believers with a great commission. We must be honest with our struggles. Moses was in a panic, totally enabled and trained for war, but contained within him was what he believed about himself, now moving with God in the presence of God himself. And it wasn't that Moses felt sorry for himself. He's, he shared the same struggle as Jesus and each one of us. He knew only a few people would believe him. And it would only be in the power of God that the Hebrews would have to be dealt with, as well as the Egyptians, even to glean those few. And why? Because our free will is not as free as we think. Man's will is captive to what we believe outside of the word of God. Our responsibility is to agree with God himself to overcome the limitations of this world. God is spirit, and when we cannot solve our problems with our finite minds, we compromise truth to what we choose to believe. Even the Colossians 2.10 tells us, we have already been made complete in Christ, who is the head of all principality and power. How much do we really believe that? So the Lord answered Moses, what's that in your hand? A walking stick, Moses replied. Throw it down, the Lord commanded. Moses threw the stick on the ground. And it immediately turned into a snake and Moses jumped back. We all need to back up and revalue our struggles, what we haven't released to God and what we truly believe about what God says about us. And think about this sign to Moses and the Israelites, that stick was a token of God in his guidance, encouragement, and protection as the great shepherd of Israel. But to Egypt, or the world we live in, all, the, all around us, that stick can be just like a bite of a poisonous serpent bearing judgment. Not everybody wants our God, and God is okay with that. Pick it up by the tail, God said. And when he did, the snake turned back into a walking stick. Do this, the Lord said. And the Israelites will believe that you have seen me, the God they worship, their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many believers today are sick. They are afflicted in their identity and their self-worth. So God told Moses, put your hand in your shirt. And when he took it out, his hand was white like leprosy. God told Moses, put your hand back in your tunic that covered his heart and his beliefs. And when he took it out, his hand was healthy as the rest of his body. Our self-worth is found in the power of our relationship with Almighty God. It's us wanting him and his power taking care of us. God was building Moses' faith. Moses, he knew all about the magicians of Egypt, but God wanted to show his power is greater than any enemy. So Moses' doubts, they were not yet defeated, and no one wants to pick a snake up by the tail, but he chose to believe, to put his faith in God. God also has a measuring stick that he has given to us that is unequal to the rest. God's very identity is within us. So Moses found out that God knew him by name. Imagine, after all he had seen and experienced, he realized all that he had experienced was for a purpose. He realized that God loved and respected Moses, and they agreed to work together to set the captives free. It's an agreement of free will. This would be a war of the power of God destroying the darkness of Egypt. And without God performing miracle signs and wonders through that stick, Moses would never be able to persuade the Israelites to believe or the Egyptians. And this is why Jesus is called the branch of the Lord. And we are the branch that carries God's own identity to fulfill his work on the earth. The Israelites, they resisted the disease of leprosy. They knew only only a miracle could cure leprosy, and this was their proof that was needed, that the divine had intervened through Moses. Each one of us from within, as the people of God, 
mentioned here, we all continue to cry out for our deliverer. He's right here with us. He is our confidence and our self-worth in every battle. And we are blessed to have our God present with us to discover our purpose, our destiny, how much we mean to him, because he because wants he w- to show us just how chosen and loved we are by him. We can read over and over, God loves you, God loves you, but just like Moses, there comes a process of uncovering and accepting who we really are in Christ. Being able to resist the lies, to wage war against them, winning the battle every time as we return back to the truth of God himself, like Moses, being transformed through restoration of relationship, who God truly says we are. And this relationship is so deep, it is called face to face, where even in battles, God is alive within us, he has filled us with himself. Think about that. Now, the Torah, the word, was not yet given, but today God speaks to us through his word. And he says to each one of you that he loves you. Do you believe this? How much do you believe it? Does every fiber of your being believe it? Or is it just a happy thought that bounces in and out of your mind? And what is stopping this from being an absolute reality in your life? That God not only loves you, that he's living inside of you. So we need to place a mark of how much we believe this on our stick. What do you believe about yourself? What about your self-worth from the depths of your being? Is it love and acceptance, the benefits of your relationship with God, or condemnation, guilt, shame, failure, everything from the world, from the past, just piling up because God wants to slay your giants and he's going to train you to war using this staff to overtake your land because the truth is we can only overcome with God. So faith is the self self-worth of a believer. Some believe as a child, childlike faith. He said it. I believe it. When I speak, he speaks. When I touch, he touches. When I worship, we minister as one. Others may not have thought about that so seriously. And tradition shows that Moses spent 40 years in the Egyptian court and in his sojourn to Midian. This was a long time, a long process. We can relate to this. And this whole time, thoughts, patterns are conformed in our experience. But the whole time, the Holy Spirit continues drawing us, transforming our minds into the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ only does what he sees his father doing as he listens in perfect obedience. Through all of our time on earth, each one of us is a witness. This is how heaven sees us. Revelations 1.5 reminds us that Jesus, our example, is a faithful witness. That's one of his titles. And we can rely on, honestly, only what he has to say. He says, trust no man, no prince, no whatever. He is the one that we can rely on. John 14.6 tells us he himself is the truth and he will never lie. He will never even take a bribe. And this should make us humbly wanting to know everything he has to say and perfect belief in him. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? This showed that Pilate did not know the father because the self-worth of a believer, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. Our self-worth, our identity is not connected to earthly political national entities like Egypt and Goshen. And it does not have We don't have our beginning in an evil world system that's still in rebellion against God because we have been atoned for. We operate under the government of heaven. The government was placed upon the shoulders of Jesus. Jesus was telling us and Pilate that while we are in this world, all that he has ever done or said was the absolute truth. And those that recognize the truth hear him. This is the witness of union God and Moses brought to the Israelites and to Egypt and for us too in our communities. So Jesus spoke Acts 1, 7 and 8, that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us and we will be his witness in Jerusalem, all of Judea, Samaria, every nation, 
of the world to the ends of the earth. God is speaking to you. This means that as believers, we will witness for who we are in and with Christ, not perfect, but with Christ, Moses would go tell Pharaoh, and then he would relay back to Goshen what was happening, what God was about to do. And you can be sure both sides agreed that we, or Moses, are sometimes just making everything worse, bringing more hardship on the world. But we do not war with flesh and blood. And God was dealing with what holds us in bondage spiritually from believing him as God and perfect truth. So truth was dealing with both sides through realizing there's no power greater than God. This is what we have to understand. Jesus, moving in the power of God, searching the self-worth, the true identity of the people, even those watching the crucifixion, then his resurrection, identified his true followers who remain his witness. This is us throughout every generation since. We believe. Amen. Think about Paul totally carrying God, beat to a pulp, left for dead, only to get up, go to the next village to preach the good news. It's not about the messenger. It's about the message. Jesus. So to stand as a witness for God, Paul, can you imagine how black and blue he was after being stoned, standing up, telling people to believe in the Lord? It involves not only our salvation and our identity, it's also what we do. I can remember being hardly able to walk, praying for people, and they got healed. Not me. They got healed. And I would ask God, listen well, because I can feel the faith in this room. I would ask God, how can I be a witness for you when I'm still going through my own struggles? My authority as a believer has nothing to do with the conditions around me, but the self-worth within me. Jesus is our self-worth. He's what I truly believe about God. He is what makes our journey unique with God, just like Moses. And we can never imagine what God is asking us to do for him, but God did. So Moses remembered the seasons of his life. He could now look back and see all that God brought him through. And so many of us can do this stop right there and think this is the life of a believer but it's not our life is the face to face god said to moses and to each believer here i am who i am and he says to you thus you shall say to the sons of israel to those around you i am has sent me to you think about that do you believe it and ask the lord god what do you want us to accomplish here in this season we are going through right now? Because Moses, finding out that God knew him personally, delivered him. He watched the manifestations of God's power, and we're no different. We carry God himself. Do you believe it? Our self-worth is God, and we are grafted into his branch. He fills us. He is our measuring rod and our portion. So to know the Father is to know who we are in Christ. Location, location, location. So for example, I'm going to use only a couple of salutations from the Bible and a couple of scriptures for you to meditate on today for the sake of time. You ready? 2 Corinthians 1, 2, New King James Version. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, many of us, when we read that, we think, wow, you know, that's a really nice saying. But Paul knew the true self-worth of a believer that all the grace and peace of God that we will ever need, truthfully, has already been given to us. God is present within us. And like Moses, we simply speak Paul was sharing the grace and peace that he received from God with each one of us who read this salutation. Paul was releasing the blessings that he received from heaven generationally, like the staff he carried to each one of us. These blessings, they're not only received from Jesus. He said, these are the blessings from the Father as well. So how much do we receive this with understanding? Let's mark our stick. Ephesians 1.3, blessed be the God 
and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, most of us read that and we think it's going to happen when we get to heaven. That's not what he said. Who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places and in Christ within us in the Holy Spirit. So a believer's self-worth would witness from these salutations, we are already citizens of heaven because we are saved, because God told us so, and we believe him. So the Father sees and relates with us in this position where we have access to every spiritual blessing that we inherited from Jesus. Whatever need you have, you have already received the answer. This means that all of our mess here on the earth, all that we believe about ourselves and who we are outside of the word of God, if we believe it, is subject. It's subject to change depending on what we believe. So the question is, how much do we believe it? This is for all of us because God always has more for us. This is what Jesus calls our benefit package. Listen, Jesus chose to receive us as his inheritance, even in our mess. Does that tell you you have any self-worth with the Lord? You know, it's all written in the word of God. And listen, we receive every blessing of the Father. Who wants to sign up for that? All of us, right? Well, we've been carrying it since the day we were saved, including with the Holy Spirit, who's just waiting, who said, look, we're going to do greater works than what Jesus did on the earth. So let's mark on our stick how much inwardly we really believe this, okay? God says we are the treasure and affection of God the Father himself. Think about that. Why are we listening to the enemy putting us down? We are the treasure and affection of God the Father himself, okay? This is scriptural. He loves each one of you as much as he loves you. Jesus. Let's swallow our spinach here because it's scriptural. John 17, 23. He loves you as much as he loves Jesus. Wowee. And here is a foundational scripture for new converts. 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This means that Every believer has the privilege and responsibility of direct access to God, not just Moses, each believer. So a royal priesthood is not only a priesthood that belongs to serve just the king. That's all you do, because it's much more than that. It is a priesthood that exercises rule with the king. Did you hear what I just said? We rule with the king. Of course, he told us we're going to do this in millennium, but he's working on on us now. Amen. So we bring our daily sacrifice to the Lord. We intercede for his desires, for his people, for his world. We praise God directly. Do you know when you're worshiping God, God is right there with you? And we're serving with God, praying on the behalf of others. Amen. Do you believe this is possible right now in your present condition? Because it is. And when you agree with God on this, you will have authority in every dimension and kingdom. Devils don't like us to understand that. So let me conclude here and attempt to sum this up in human words, which are actually eternal. There is nothing lacking or missing in Jesus Christ. We have already received the blessings of God. You can mark this on your stick where you find yourself even in worship and thanksgiving. Every benefit of the atonement is retained in heaven. It is progressively dispersed to us on the earth in accordance with what we need and how we are growing in our faith. And if I say, I see you healed, it is done in the spirit. It will manifest on the earth according to what you believe, because our faith is in Christ alone. How much do we truly believe what he said? He 
who is truth. And we ask God to give us more of him. We all do it. I do it all the time still. Everything that he has, I want it all. But Romans 5, 5 tells us, and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. How's that for a dose of love? God's love and all of him was placed within us when we believe. And all of our spiritual blessings are applied through the Holy Spirit within us. And we find ourselves asking God for what is already available to us. And it's the same with his virtue, his character, his fruits, his gifts, because the truth is all of these blessings were already released to us. Why? Like God dealing in Egypt and Goshen. So we would believe. Yep. So let us agree by God and Moses, Jesus and us to allow the Holy Spirit to build our faith, restoring our true identity and self-worth because God's divine power has already granted to us everything pertaining to life here and eternally and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us. He called us by his own glory and excellence. So let's throw our stick down before the Lord. Jesus asked the Father to let this cup pass from him so that we would know without doubt that Jesus did fulfill his mission. And now our cup is full of the Holy Spirit and the atonement of Christ and the love of the Father. And this makes the only if is if we will believe. JesusTodayMinistries.org. We are here to minister and to pray with you right in the comfort of your own home. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. My name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor, and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at JesusTodayMinistries.org. You can get to know more about me there. Read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat. Look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.